All right, so here's what appears to be a fairly intimidating looking example. We've got a rational function, cubic on top, and it might not be immediately obvious how to proceed. Later on, we're going to look at more examples with rational functions. We're going to see a technique called partial fractions that allows us to deal with a lot of integrals involving rational functions. In fact, pretty much any integral involving rational functions. But there's one kind of golden rule that's going to apply then, and it applies now, which is any time you have a rational function where the degree of the numerator is bigger than or equal to the degree of the denominator, you should not proceed without attempting to simplify, right? I mean, you should always try to simplify your function before you attempt to integrate, because who knows, maybe, maybe you have something that looks complicated, but it cleans up quite a bit. Now, one thing you might hope here is that maybe there's like some factoring and cancelling you can do, but you can check that that doesn't happen. So, what can you do? Well, what you can do is you can do long division, okay? No, it's not everyone's favorite game. But let's take a look at what it gets us in this case. Okay, so here's our numerator, and we're going to divide in the denominator. x squared plus 2x plus 1. Looks like I need to switch. So remember how this works for polynomial long division? In, in some ways, it's even it's almost more straightforward than, than numerical long division. You just have to compare highest powers as you work your way across. So you say x squared times what gives me x cubed? Well, x, right? Now, x time, now we just multiply. x times x squared, x cubed. x times 2x, 2x squared. x times 1 is x. Right. And we subtract, so x cubed minus x cubed, 0. 4x squared minus 2x squared, 2x squared, 8x minus x, 7x, 5 minus 0, 5. x squared times what gives me 2x squared? Well, 2. All right, we multiply. 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. And again, we subtract. We get 3x plus 3. Good. Okay. Now, at this point, we get something where the degree is less than the thing we're dividing by. That's our remainder, and we stop. But what this tells us is that this original function here is equal to, so x plus 2 plus the remainder. 3x plus 3 over the thing that we're dividing by, right? x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay? All right. Better. And actually, now we do get lucky because... Well, we get lucky or the problem was designed this way, however you want to think about it. Um, up here, this 3x plus 3, that's 3 times x plus 1. x squared plus 2x plus 1, that's x plus 1 squared, right? So this time we can factor and cancel. We get x plus 2 plus 3 divided by x plus 1. So we haven't, we haven't done an antiderivative yet, right? We haven't done any integration. All we've done is algebra. But the point of doing the algebra is we take this scary looking thing, we do a little bit of work, we simplify, we clean up, and we say, ah, now we can integrate term by term, and I know how to handle each one of these, right? Each of these are simple. We don't even need to do substitution. Antiderivative for x is 1 half x squared. Antiderivative for 2 is 2x. Two and here, OK. You could let u equal to x plus 1, right? But we know how to handle these sort of linear substitutions. This is going to be 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus our constant. And we're done.